Hi YouTube. Um, today I'm going to read from Bobby Brown's Makeup Manual. It's a gorgeous book full of tips and uh, descriptions and gorgeous pictures about makeup. Um, I'm just going to flip through and read some descriptions and lists and makeup tips. So, um, let's get started. I'm going to start with essential tools uh, about makeup brushes and it's basically a list of brushes and their function and okay here we go. Blush brush. This needs to be wide enough to cover the apple of the cheek. The bristles should be soft, natural hair with beveled and curved edges. Bronzer brush. This is thicker and fuller than a blush brush and has a flat profile. It is designed for sweeping and pressing bronzer over cheeks, forehead, nose, and chin to provide natural looking warmth to the skin. Brow brush. A brush with stiff, short bristles cut on an angle. Designed for applying shadow to the brows. Look for a synthetic or natural blend of bristles, as the 100% synthetic brushes are too stiff and don't deposit cover as effectively. Sorry, color as effectively. Brow grooming brush. This is for brushing brows into place. It has stiff bristles cut straight across like a toothbrush. Concealer brush. This should have firm but soft bristles that aren't too hard or scratchy since the brush will be used on the delicate skin under the eyes. Look for a brush with glossy synthetic hairs as these slip along the skin. The ends of the bristles should be tapered to help you place concealer in hard to reach spots such as the inner corners of the eyes and apply stick foundation to cover any redness around the nose. Eye Blender Brush A soft, fluffy, natural hair brush with long bristles designed to blend eye shadow and eliminate lines of demarcation on the lids after applying multiple shades. It is also great for applying powder to set corrector concealer or foundation around the eyes or over blemish cover. Eye contour brush. A round flat head natural hair brush. Short dense bristles apply a greater amount of shadow in the crease to contour the eye. Eye Shader Brush A wide, flat head brush that can gently sweep eyeshadow color over the entire lid from lash line to the brown bone, brow bone. <laughs> Eye Smudge Brush A small head brush with a slightly rounded point. This brush has soft, flexible bristles that help smudge liner to create a smoky look. Eyelash comb. This has a straight, stiff, fine tooth and designed to separate lashes immediately after applying mascara while the lashes are still wet. Mascara wands work just as well and are more convenient. Eyelash curler. Look for a basic metal version with rubber pads. An eyelash curler shapes lashes into a natural looking curl. Replace pads regularly. To avoid breakage, always curl the lashes before applying mascara. Angled eyeliner brush. This small brush 
has a very short, dense bristle cut on an angle. It is designed to use with shadow to strengthen thin brows or as an alternative to an eyeliner brush. Eyeliner brush, flat, with flat, dense, synthetic bristles that are slightly rounded at the tip. This brush can be used wet or dry to apply a precise line at the lash line. Face Blender Brush A natural or synthetic brush used to deposit shimmer, bronzer, powder, or blush. Foundation Brush Synthetic bristles in this full, flat-edged brush deposit just the right amount of foundation onto the skin. Lip Brush Firm, long bristles come to a slightly pointed tip. This brush allows for the precise placement of lip color. Bristles can be either synthetic or natural. Powder Puff A velour puff that's about the size of your palm designed to press powder onto the face to lock foundation into place. Can be hand washed or tossed in the dishwasher at least once a week. Touch up brush, short, firm, natural bristled brush used with foundation for spot touch ups and for hard to reach areas around the nose and mouth. This brush can also be used to touch up concealer and apply eyeshadow. Tweezers. It's well worth investing in a good pair of tweezers. Look at the Tweezerman or Rubis brands. Tweezers that are angled at the tip are easier to control than those that come to a sharp point. Always cover tweezers tips with the included rubber cap when they are not in use. Okay, flipping through. And this is an analysis of the skin. It's descriptions of different various skin types and how to care for each skin type. Here we go. Normal skin. Comfortable feeling, smooth, even texture with small pores. Cheeks are the driest area, but not excessively dry. May experience some shine and larger pores on the forehead, nose, or chin. Water and oil content in this skin is balanced. Care for normal skin. Normal skin needs routine cleansing with a foaming cleanser, exfoliation twice a week, moisturization with lightweight lotions, and the use of a sunscreen to keep it healthy. A diet rich in vitamins A, C, and E helps keep skin smooth and soft. Sufficient fluid intake is important to maintain hydration and rid the body of toxins. Dry or extra dry skin. Feels tight after washing. May look dry or flaky. Feels rough and uneven or dehydrated. May be sensitive. Pores are small, almost invisible. Shows fine lines faster than other skin types. Care for dry skin. Dry skin requires special care. A lifestyle that includes a healthy diet with foods high in water content such as fruit and vegetables and at least eight glasses of water a day keeps this skin type hydrated. Caffeine and alcohol cause dehydration so limit intake to two cups or glasses a day. Using richer cleansers limiting sun exposure and using a good moisturizer can protect your skin's natural oils. Layering different textures of moisturizer 
can do wonders to hydrate the skin. Begin with a lightweight facial oil, then layer a richer cream over that. Night creams with alpha hydroxy acid help remove the dry, dead skin while moisturizing the new skin. Air conditioning and heating create dry environments. Correct this in your home by using humidifiers. Oily skin. Oily skin is shiny, especially through the T-zone, which is the forehead, nose, and chin. It is a condition caused by overactive sebaceous or oil-producing glands. It may have large, visible pores, frequent breakouts, few signs of aging, such as fine lines. Management of oily skin and the prevention of breakouts requires a healthy diet and a regular skin care routine. Cleanse the face at least twice a day to prevent dirt accumulation and to keep pores open. Use an alcohol-free astringent to remove excess oil. Use oil-free moisturizers to keep the skin from over drying. Combination skin, oily through the T-zone, dry cheeks or spot dehydration, larger pores on the forehead, nose, and chin. Care for combination skin. Care for this skin type requires regular cleansing, toning, and moisturizing of the oily areas and the use of a milder cleanser and denser moisturizer for the dry areas. Moisturizing products containing AHA will benefit this skin type. Sensitive skin can range from dry to oily. Easily irritated by cosmetics, moisturizers, and cleansers. Sensitive and prone to redness. Itchy or blotchy. Care for sensitive skin. Sensitive skin requires mild, non-perfumed cleansing products. Use an alcohol-free toner formulated for sensitive skin. Also, use cleansers and moisturizers specifically formulated for this type of skin. Okay. Next, we have hmm, let's see. This is different types of foundations. Okay, and their descriptions. Okay. It says foundations are available in many different formulas. Use the following guidelines to choose your formula. Tinted moisturizer. For normal to dry skin, gives a sheer, lightweight coverage and is an alternative to foundation. Provides a totally natural look. Great for weekends. Tinted face balm. For extra dry skin. Provides sheer coverage, intensely hydrates, and gives skin a dewy finish. Balm actually plumps the skin and reduces the appearance of fine lines. Stick Foundation For all skin types except oily, provides easy spot coverage and is also buildable for medium to full coverage. Best foundation for photography. Liquid foundation for dry to extra dry skin. Hydrates and smooths, providing medium to full coverage. Moisturizing compact for dry to extra dry skin. Hydrating formulas provide medium to full coverage. Whipped foundation for 
combination skin and great for skin with texture. Balances the skin by hydrating dry areas and absorbing oil in the T-zone. Provides medium to full coverage. Oil-free liquid foundation. For oily skin. For combination skin in the summer. Absorbs oil and smooths while providing light to medium coverage. Oil-free cream foundation. For normal to oily skin. Absorbs oil, providing medium to full coverage. A good choice to cover acne and large pores. Mineral powders, suggested for very oily skin. Be careful when selecting color. Oily skin can change color of powders, and they may appear dry and pasty. Okay. The next section I'm going to read is about lip products. And it's pretty much just like the foundation one, but about lips only. Okay, matte products are dense and last longest. They contain less moisture than other products, so they adhere to the lips and don't fade as quickly. They are not appropriate for very dry lips. Semi-matte products are less dry than matte products and don't last as long. They work best on textured or dry lips and give off a soft sheen. Sheer colors are see-through, forgiven, and easy to use. Stains provide long-lasting, highly pigmented color. Tints, like sheer glosses or balms, protect the lips with moisturizing formulas that usually contain sunscreen. Balms are tinted or clear formulas and help soften the lips. Gloss sticks are hybrids between sheer lipsticks and gloss. They add a bit more pigment than lip gloss does, but both are see-through and moist. Lip glosses provide hydration, sun protection, and sheen. This formula is great for making the lips look fuller and for layering on top of the other lip colors. Chubby lip pencils will both define the lips and provide a creamy matte texture. They are long lasting but can be a bit dry. Lip liners define the lips and keep lipstick on longer when used on the entire lip area. Okay, this. Hmm. This is actually a uh, how to choose your lip color for certain types. For pale lips, use pastel shades such as pale pink or light beige. Deep tones appear very dark on pale lips, so apply them with a light hand. Very dark lips look best with blue toned and deep saturated lip color. Very pale shades of lipstick can appear gray or ashy on dark lips. For uneven colored lips that are either dark with pink inside or one darker and one lighter lip, you can choose to enhance or conceal the natural colors. Use a light shade that corresponds to the lighter lip color to enhance and bring out the paler lip or use a deeper shade for a dramatic full coverage look. To even out tone, use a sheer dark lipstick as a base on the lighter area and then apply regular lipstick. Okay, this one is 
um, contour application um, of eyeshadow on different eye shapes. <clears throat> Deep set eyes need to be brought out with light and medium to deep medium shades of shadow. Colors that are too dark recede and will make the eyes look even more deep set. Wide set eyes will appear closer together with a sweep of shadow one to two shades darker than the foundation tone at the inner corner of the eye. When applying liner, thicken the line a bit at the inner corner and do not extend it past the outer corner of the eye. To make eyes look bigger, line your eyes all the way around. To make eyes look more oval, top and bottom liner should meet at the outer corners. Then contour shadow from the lash line along the eyeliner outward and into the crease. To make large eyes look smaller, use a soft shadow color as a liner at the lower lash line. The shadow should be several shades lighter than the top liner. To make eyes look less puffy, apply contour shadow at the outer corners and blend it as you move in toward the nose. Okay, now here is eyeliner do's and don'ts. <clears throat> Don't apply eyeliner to the inside rim of the eyelids except for a theatrical effect or a fashion shoot. You risk infection and injury. And rather than making the eyes stand out, lining inside the rim actually makes the eyes appear small. Don't line just the bottom of the eye. Do line all the way across the lids. You can line just the top and not the bottom, but don't line either lid halfway. Lining from the inner corner to the outer corner will help open up the eye. Do apply liner as close as possible to the lash line, making sure there is no gap. This has the added benefit of making the lashes look fuller. Do apply liner thinnest at the inner corner of the eye and thicken it as you move outward. This accentuates the eye's shape and gives the eyes a lift. Do make the top and bottom lines of liner meet at the inside and outside corners to make the eyes appear larger. Not connecting the lines makes the eyelids appear too round and small. Okay, I think we're gonna stop there for today. In the next video with this book, I will uh, flip through it with my camera and show the pictures as I read along with it. Um, thank you for listening, YouTube. Everyone have a great day.